Hi guys, welcome back to part two of Pi4 Multimodel Instruct Tutorial Series. I'm still not feeling well and don't quite have my voice back, so I will be using AI to voice this video as well. Now in part one, we explored how to use OpenAI's standard API to interact with Pi4 model through a Python server. Today we'll review the Python server implementation. Then we'll explore something really exciting, the Onyx version of Pi4, which allows you to run the model natively in C-sharp without Python dependencies. This is perfect for .NET developers who want to integrate AI capabilities directly into their applications. By the end of this video, you'll understand both approaches and be able to choose the one that best fits your project requirements. As always, all the code we'll cover is available in my GitHub repository. You'll find the link in the description below. The Onyx version is not quantized and can be downloaded from my Hugging Face page. Let's get started. Let's start with a quick review of our Python server architecture. The main Python script functions as our service layer and implements fast API to handle HTTP requests. From there, we have dedicated root handlers for different capabilities, chat, audio, images, and video. Each root directs requests to its corresponding handler script where the actual processing takes place. I tried to keep the architecture modular. The model script contains all our chat objects that interface with Pi4. Separate request and response scripts handle the input validation and output formatting. A dedicated utility script manages additional operations like function calling. This separation of concerns makes our code more maintainable and easier to extend as we add new features. Now let's move to our main topic, using Pi4 directly in your c -sharp applications. Microsoft has released an Onyx version of the model, but it's the quantized variant. In my testing, this quantized version showed noticeably lower quality outputs compared to the original. I reached out to the Microsoft team and they provided instructions to create an ONNX version that's comparable to the original model's quality. You can find this optimized Onyx model on my Hugging Face page. Go ahead and download it before we continue. Important hardware note, you'll need a capable GPU to handle the processing efficiently. If you don't have a suitable GPU but still want to follow along, Please be aware that your results will differ from what I demonstrate. While you can technically run my Onyx model on your CPU, I only achieved about one token every one to two seconds, which isn't practical for most use cases. Now let's set up your environment to run the model. You have two options. Either download the complete Visual Studio solution from my GitHub repository, or follow along as we build it step by step. I will be going a bit fast, so either pause the video or look up the code in my GitHub repo. To load the Onyx model in our C-Sharp application, we'll need the Microsoft Machine Learning Onyx Runtime, Gen AI CUDA New Get Package. This package provides all the necessary components to run the model efficiently on your GPU. Don't worry about dependencies. The New Get Package Manager will automatically install everything we need. Now that we've set up our project, let's explore how to use Pi4 with different input types, text for chat, audio for transcription or translation, and images for description. Let's start with a basic chat example where users can interact with the Pi4 model. When working with Pi4, following the correct prompt template is crucial. We begin by creating a system prompt that directs how the model should behave. When the user asks a question, we generate a user prompt and append it to our full prompt history. Here's how the implementation works. We encode our prompt string into tokens. We create generator parameters to control aspects like temperature, and max length. We set up a tokenizer stream, which we'll use to decode the model's generated sequence. We create the generator and feed it our tokens. We stream the response tokens from the generator directly to the console. Finally, we append the full response to our chat history for continued conversation. This core process, encoding inputs, generating tokens, and streaming outputs, remains the same whether we're working with text chat, audio transcription, or image description. The main difference lies in how we prepare the initial prompt for each modality. Now let's explore how to transcribe or translate audio files in a single operation. In this example, we'll focus on a one-shot processing approach rather than a turn-based chat, though you could easily extend this to a conversation using the patterns from our previous example. The key difference when working with audio is that we need to use a multimodal processor. This allows Pi4 to handle different types of inputs beyond just text. For audio transcription, we'll use an audio file from the Phi cookbook examples. We simply pass the audio file along with a prompt instructing Pi4 to transcribe the content. The model will process the audio 
and return the transcribed text. We can easily modify this to perform translation instead. By changing our prompt to request a translation to Spanish, the model will listen to the audio and directly output the Spanish translation of the content. Next, let's see how we can apply similar techniques to work with images. Now let's see how to use Pi4 to analyze and describe images. The setup process follows the same pattern we've established, but with one key difference. We'll use an image tag in our prompt and load an image file. We then pass both the image and our text prompt to the model and receive a descriptive response. As you can see in the demonstration, Pi4 accurately describes the content of our image. However, it's important to note that the model cannot currently return bounding boxes or precise object locations. At least I haven't found a way to make it do so. If you need bounding boxes to describe desktop applications, web pages, or UI elements, I recommend using Microsoft's OmniParser instead. I'll be creating a dedicated tutorial on that model soon. For video content, while Pi4 isn't designed to process videos directly, you can implement a workaround by slicing the video into individual frames, passing these frames as a series of images, asking the model to describe the content such as a slide deck presentation. We demonstrated this technique in our previous video. Check out the Python service implementation for more details. Finally, it's worth highlighting that Pi4's multimodal capabilities allow you to send both audio and image inputs to the model simultaneously, opening up interesting possibilities for combined analysis. Now you know how to chat, transcribe or translate audio and describe images with Pi4 in C Sharp. However, there is one limitation with the Onyx format. In the original PyTorch tensor model, we can pass an image and ask the model to write code based on that image. In the Onyx format, the audio, image and text processing capabilities are separated into different models. Therefore, if you want to generate code, you'll need to use the text processor specifically. Remember to download the optimized Onyx model from my Hugging Face page and the complete code from my GitHub repository. Links are in the description below. If you found this tutorial helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content on AI integration with .NET. Thanks for watching and feel free to leave your questions in the comments below.